This is the Sony 24-70 F2.8G Master, a lens we've waited years for, so can it finally hang with the big DSLRs? Let's find out. The 24-70 F2.8 and full frame body are in almost every working pro's bag, whether they're shooting events, weddings, landscapes, or photojournalism. The zoom covers the most commonly used focal lengths, and the fast 2.8 aperture means you can use a low ISO even in dim indoor lighting. Full disclosure, Sony flew us out to a press event in Miami and provided a room, food, and drinks, but they didn't restrict this review. If you're considering spending 2200 bucks on this lens, the question you should be asking is whether you should invest instead in a more traditional DSLR system. You see, we can't review just the lens because if the lens is great, but the body can't get it into focus, no pro is gonna be happy with the results. So we paired it with a $3,200 A7R II to see if Sony is finally ready for pros working events, weddings, and photojournalism. There is one difference that the Sony 24-70 has over the Canon, and that's that the Canon 24-70 does not have image stabilization, but the Sony, though it doesn't have image stabilization on the lens, it has in-body image stabilization. I found with the Canon that sometimes I have to go beyond the reciprocal rule to avoid uh, camera shake. So Sony, I think it has a leg up this time. I used a slower shutter speed for the shot to show motion. The 1 80th isn't technically breaking the reciprocal rule. We get the sharpest results when we shoot two to four times the reciprocal rule when we're using sharp lenses like this and 40 megapixel sensors. And that means that the steady shot inside definitely helped the sharpness. Handheld, the pro using Sony gear will simply get sharper results than the pro using the unstabilized Canon gear. Of course, Nikon does have a stabilized 24 to 70 f2.8. And both Canon and Nikon users could choose the stabilized Tamron if they don't mind its focus breathing and build quality. Sony's full frame sensor stabilization is a huge advantage for those using this lens or fast primes, but DSLR shooters still enjoy far more choices, especially for cheaper lenses. Check out the shot at 70mm and f2.8. It's sharp, but the A7R2's eye detection autofocus nailed it, even in dim light. At the long end and wide open, this should be as unsharp as the lens will ever get. It's perfect. At 24 millimeters and f2.8 in full sun, it again performed very well. Okay, and you're going to have them sell you five yeah. kilos of cocaine, we'll be taping it. Or you can wear a pair of these. You drive a hard bargain, though. <laughs> I drive a hard bargain. Ah, and now we're photojournalists in the mid 1980s? The camera and lens combination performed flawlessly, quickly snapping into focus and producing sharp, clean images, even in low light. While the G Master lens performed perfectly, we're still waiting for a Sony body with dual memory card slots. One failure means you lose an entire shoot, and that can cost you thousands of dollars. Read these comments from subscribers whose wedding photographers were shooting with a single card that failed. It's devastating to the family, but it can also really hurt the photographer's career. Your memory card might never fail, but how much will it cost you if it does? Are you willing to take that gamble? The lack of a dedicated focus point selector isn't a problem when you can take your time and shoot, but for events where you have only a split second to change the focusing point and grab that candid moment, well, Sony's focusing point selection system is just a tad slower, and it causes to miss a couple of shots. Eye detect focusing helps with this, but sometimes it fails, and in situations with multiple people, it can focus on the wrong face. For vent photography, rapid focus point selection is a must-have. Before the G Master lenses, lack of good glass was the biggest weak point in the Sony Pro lineup. Now it's time for the body to catch up. At first, many photographers bought into the Sony mirrorless system for its small size. The size benefits completely disappear with good glass, however, and the Sony setup was actually a bit bigger than our Canon gear. Choose Sony for the beautiful image quality, the tilt screen, the sensor stabilization, the 4K video, the electronic viewfinder, the Wi-Fi, but with this setup, you won't be using it for its small size. At 35 millimeters wide open, vignetting and chromatic aberration just weren't a problem. This candid shot turned out perfect, and there's no sign of chromatic aberration on her hair against the bright background. Even in the corners, the bouquet seems nice and round, though some photographers will complain about the sharply defined edges. Likewise in this shot, the bouquet is round even at the corners, but the bouquet does have edges. We did find a bit of moiré that we'd like to fix in post, a condition that comes about when using sharp lenses and sensors without AA filters. 
Canon offers the 5DS for those wanting an AA filter, and Sony just doesn't have an equivalent. Shooting directly into the sun, wide open, produced no flaring. It's remarkable. When comparing the Canon 2470 to the Sony, we had a really difficult time differentiating the image quality. So we'd look through several sets of pictures, and they both looked about equally sharp. Now you have to take into consideration that there are other variables involved. So we had to have it on a steady tripod, and there could have been some shake on the floor. We're in a hotel. Um, but all of those factors don't really matter in the real world. There's always going to be some element interfering. Here, I'm comparing the Canon 5DSR with the Canon 24-70 f2.8 to the Sony a7R2 with the Sony 24-70 f2.8. And I just can't tell the difference. Working pros probably won't ever max out the sharpness of either the Sony or the Canon, so let's just call this one a tie. Comparing the Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master to the older Sony f4 lens, the G Master is much, 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 much sharper. If you're using the f4 lens, the f2.8 will be a huge upgrade in sharpness, as well as size and expense. The build quality is great, and the focusing and zoom rings feel wonderful. We wish it had a focus distance indicator on the lens and an aperture ring like the 85mm G Master. Now, we don't much care about how a lens balances, but because we know people will ask, I gotta say it, this lens makes the Sony feel pretty front heavy. So can the G Master 24-70 hang with Canon and Nikon? Yeah, it, it definitely can. And on an a7R2, it's got image stabilization, an electronic viewfinder, a tilt screen. It, I'd rather pick it up than uh, the Canon or Nikon equivalents. It's expensive, but if you're in the Sony world, I think it's kind of the best deal going. If you like this video, subscribe to see more. Give me a like, share it with your friends. Thanks.